The market theatre is going big under new leadership. The theatre has announced its first artistic program, which is aimed at developing the industry under new artistic director Greg Homan. The play development program will focus on uplifting playwrights, especially women writers. To tell us a bit more, I'm joined by the man himself. That's Greg Homan, the director of artistic programs at the Market Theatre. Pleasure to have you on the show this afternoon. It's now, good to be here. Firstly, the Market Theatre is known as a very historic uh, venue, which is an obvious favourite for many South Africans or even people from abroad travelling to the country. In your own words, why is this such an iconic or even a significant venue? Well, the Market Theatre is approaching its 50th year, so yeah. it's currently, in 2026, it'll turn 50. And um, it started in 1976, as many of, of the viewers might know. And um, it was really the home of theatre of the struggle through the 80s. And it was able to, through that very difficult period of our country's history, um, really be the newspaper of the day. So where censorship was rife and where the apartheid government had censored a lot of voices, the market theatre remained a very... Um, open and accessible space that was able to tell the stories of, of South Africans who were living and struggling under apartheid and so on. And that caught the eye of an international community and that legacy that was, was made through the, the late 70s and mm. into the 80s continues. And so through the 90s and into the early 2000s, the market data has remained and, and continues to be the this, this, this space of free, f free voices, free thinking, um, and entertainment as well, um, but it also really just um, is, is, is the home of, of, in many ways, South African yeah. arts and culture, and particularly theatre, although it's not only theatre. We also have the photo workshop, we also have Windy Brow, we also have a very um, established uh, um, program for, for uh, students who are learning to be actors, and many of those actors have gone on to be household names um, you know, in, in the South African context. So it's got a long and rich uh, legacy. So you're taking on this uh, very important uh, new role. Let's speak about the program and uh, exactly what uh, it will feature. I mean, we, I see it also speaks about that uh, four-pronged uh, play uh, development program for writers as well. Uh, speak yeah. to us about the significance of that. Yeah, I mean, th you know, obviously the theatre part of what we do is a key aspect and it's, 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 it really speaks to our roots. Mm. And if we don't in my view, support the development of new plays, then we don't have quality plays to put on our stage. And plays are not, not written by single people sitting in, alone in a room. Um, they're often written by teams, they workshop, South Africa has a long workshop tradition and so on. So I felt it was really important that one of the first things I did at the Market Theatre in this position as artistic director was focus on, on a program and launch a program that was able to develop the voices and what I really call the next wave of South African playwrights and theatre makers. And so this four-pronged approach, um, I hope, captures a, 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 a need amongst um, the South African theatre community to really nurture and enrich and give a space for, for playwrights, some of which have been working for a long time, yeah. but, but a space to really test ideas, to explore ideas, and to grow their ideas in a supportive way and to use the resources that the Market Theatre and the Market Theatre Foundation has to do that. And, and I believe that by, by focusing on that, in time we're going to have even stronger and greater plays that will really resonate with South African audiences and you know, hopefully beyond as well. And also within uh, this uh, very historic precinct is the Kipi's uh, Jazz Club. I mean, uh, in recent years, we had uh, seen stories about it being uh, closed down or closing its doors as well. But uh, you do have plans to use it as a fringe venue. Uh, tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so a few years ago, Kippies went through um, a refurbishment. Mm. So it's now a very sort of safe space for, for you know, for to, 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 to use again. And it has been largely through COVID and, um, you know, since, since the pandemic has kind of uh, started to, to ease, um, it has been a, a space that's been available but hasn't been used very much. And what's very clear to me in the first few weeks of arriving into this job in January is the need for, for artists, um, not only in theatre, but also musicians who want to launch albums, emerging artists, um, spoken word artists, poets, uh, who, who want a space to be able to present work, to test work, to, to have a few performances and so on. So um, at the end of March, I launched that as a 60-seater fringe venue. Mm. 
um, which we will give to artists for uh, one week. And during that week, they can use it for between two and five performances. And um, it will really, I hope, be a space of, uh, and a way of activating the cultural precinct that, is, that, yeah. that the market that is part of around Newtown. Um, but also, more importantly, give artists a dedicated space where they can do small-scale work um, that might grow into bigger scale work, but where they can test ideas or where they can do poetry and spoken word and hip hop and, and um, uh, album launches and, 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 and small scale uh, uh, things that, that, that really give them a platform to, to launch what they want to do and kind of projects. And I'm not only talking emerging artists because yeah. I really feel like we need to support mid-career artists as well. So this space is not just for, for emerging artists and not just for new voices. It's for new voices as well as, yeah. you know, um, mid-career artists and established artists. And it seems there's a, also this uh, focus on that uh, play development program. What exactly does that entail? So the play development program has, um, so actually uh, just this week I confirmed the 12 uh, playwrights who will be our associate playwrights for the next six months. Um, so there's that program. There are writers, um, and I'm focusing eight, uh, I'm giving eight spaces to writers who haven't written for the stage before, um, but have written for other mediums. So they might be novelists, they might be poets, they might be journalists, um, and so on. I'm giving space, space uh, to them, so there'll be eight of those. And, and then there's a work, what we're calling workshop collectives, which is groups of theater makers who want to uh, be in a room together yeah. to test an idea and create. And so those three sort of focus areas, they then give us a play development program, and then we also have the mentorship of some some really established South African playwrights like Fatima DK and um, uh, Craig Higginson, um, Phyllis Klotz, Small and Daba, uh, and so on. So and, and Paul Slavalevsky. So there's some really wonderful um, sort of skills transfer that is able to happen across this program as well. And I'm hoping that as a kind of ecosystem, right. this, this program over the next six to eight months will hopefully deliver some new plays that we can take um, into full production next year. And speaking about uh, developing talent, there seems to be a major focus on uh, women writers as well. Uh, why? So I really think that um, we need to signal very loud and clearly that we want more women writers in the theater space right. and we want to give them space. And I know that they're out there, I know that they exist, and I know they're wanting space. And so I wanted to signal right up front that I'm interested in having conversations with them. I want, I, I want to, to, to make it as accessible a space for everyone. And historically, um, female writers have, have largely not been given the same space mm. as male writers. So I wanted to signal that right up front. And so we've got an incredible uh, collection of 12 female playwrights who are now associate playwrights with us, and I'll be having the first meeting with them next week. Um, actually, in 10 days' time. Yeah. And um, I'm really excited because they, they, they're, they're writers who've been working for some time and so on. So to, to, to be able to support them further, um, I think is really exciting. And I'm pretty confident that they'll be able to, to deliver yeah. sort of new plays that we'll be able to put on next year. So it can be a, a really exciting year for female playwrights, hopefully next year at the market. Now, Greg, there might be people looking at this conversation and uh, also very keen to take part, but asking how do we even... Uh, get into these, uh, uh, call them uh, workshop collectives as well at mm. the Market Theatre? Yeah, so, I mean, we did a call-out. Those call-outs are largely now closed. So we, we, we did a call-out um, a few, few weeks ago. Yeah. That call-out closed, um, you know, about 10 days ago um, and, and so on. So, but we will be doing more call-outs later on. Um, we've, we've also got a call-out for new scripts um, that went out. Again, it's, it's closed, but we will do another cycle of that. So if people have got plays that have not been produced and they're lying around and they haven't yet had a production um, but they want to put them under our nose. Later on this year we will do a second cycle of a call out for, for new scripts which we will then send out to readers. It can be in any South African language and we've got readers who will be able to read and engage with scripts in any South African yeah. language and they will then write, uh, the, the, the readers will write a report which will then come to me and the team and we will look at those reports and then we will decide sort of how we potentially engage with those scripts and the, those playwrights in, in the future. Now, Greg, the Market Theatre has also uh, developed or curated a smaller and very carefully curated Jomba. Uh, tell us yeah. a bit more about that. Yeah, so it's very exciting. You know, Jomba is a dance festival that's been happening yeah. in KZN in Durban for, uh, this will be its 25th year. It's the longest running dance festival in the country. 
and um, it has never sort of had a, had a season at the market theatre. So it just feels right that in its 25th year, we can host a smaller version of Jomba immediately after its season in, in, in Durban. So in September, I think it's the 20th to the 27th of, uh, no, yes, I think it's the 20th to the 27th. No, I'm getting that wrong. <laughs> it's, 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 it's sometime in September, but yeah. it's immediately after Jomba in Durban. Right. Um, it, it, we will have a small um, a festival of Jomba at the Market Theatre, um, which will be four curated events handpicked from, from the Jomba Festival that's been in Durban. And, at least, and, and three of those artists will be sort of quite established, or more than established, they're sort of groundbreaking international choreographers. And uh, they will also be Mamela, um, the, the, you know, the well-known choreo uh, South African choreographer yeah. who will be presenting her work as, as part of, of that festival as well. Now, in closing, uh, I want to take a very interesting uh, statement that you made to call the market theatre uh, a cradle for creativity. Uh, yeah. Tell us a bit more about that and why you gave it that assessment. Well, well, so the Cradle of Creativity is actually the title of another festival that we're doing later right. this year, um, and that's with Acetage South Africa. And Acetage um, is an international organization mm. that focuses on work for youth and um, an international and, and theater for youth. Right. So right. Um, they have an international festival, and this year it will be hosted in South Africa, and it will be very, you know, at the market will be the main hub. There are some other spaces beyond the market where Asatej will be, but the main hub will be the market theater. And so the Cradle of Creativity is a youth festival um, that, that will be with us, and those dates I do know, it's the 20th to the 27th <laughs> of August, um, and that will be one week of youth work at yeah. the market theatre. So we've mentioned quite a number of activities or, or, uh, under your program. Uh, tell us uh, how people can actually engage with the market theatre or even get more information about some of the activities that you have yeah. planned. So the easiest way would be, go, would be to go to the market theatre website um, and to then uh, just enter your details for the, our mailing list. We do a weekly um, a newsletter which keeps everyone up to date who's on that mailing list as to what's upcoming. Um, and, or they could, if they go to the website, click on, on, on the programs that we have to offer, and the full program is, is listed there um, as, a, as a PDF document, which, which people can download or just look at online. Um, and th that's being updated regularly. So um, the document that's up there will be updating this week with, with a whole new uh, bunch of exciting things, including the promised Damon Gulgut's um, play, uh, well, D Damon's Gulgut. Uh, Galgut's Booker yeah. Prize winning novel which is being turned into a play by Damon Galgut himself and Sylvain Strike who will be co-writing it and directing it with an amazing cast yeah. um, later on in the year. So that's one of the sort of highlights of, of, of the year ahead along with a bunch of other things that include music, dance, theatre and so on. Looking forward to all of that. Greg Homan, he's the director of our, the artistic program at the Market Theatre. Uh, telling, telling us a bit more about some of the activities that uh, he has lined up.